Welcome to part two of the Mansion of Silence. Now that we've moved through the clock tower, the side passage and courtyard, we're going to move on to some outlying buildings that once housed the workshops of this great house and then onto the main building. Perhaps these arches were a stable building. Past the arches, you can see the remains of some kind of tiled rooms, possibly bathrooms or baths. The stunning decay of this building is really palpable. You have the lush ivy and growth coming through the roof. You can see where large hunks of plaster have fallen and blocked this doorway partly. There's a whole small hamlet along this alley, now just blankly staring windows to darkness.
This bike is strange and out of place. A bit rusty it seems to have been left here and oddly next to this circular hole that seems to reach in towards the basement. I'm curious if this was just ditched or if someone was or is living around here. We're going to now head inside the main building area. One of my favorite things about exploring these types of locations is the sense of a suspension of the current world you're in. You can literally forget everything around you and there's no one to see you as you stumble through the ruins on a personal trek to find the inner peace they seem to bring. Up ahead is what looks to be an old side tower of the house.
Underfoot is moss, overhead trees, all around the ruined walls, doors, windows, arches. It's truly a contained secret garden. There is some definite collapse here with the cellar showing through in a door. They may be a bit dangerous to go in from this side. So many arches to what must have been so many rooms. This mansion would have been a constant swirl of activity as servants ran across the hallways about their daily tasks. The spell in these places reaches you always. I stopped wondering why the person with the bike would have left on foot or stayed here and let it rust. They must have felt like me having a sense they've straddled two worlds where time slows and you start to lose track of the thoughts that intrude on the experience. Maybe they sat down on a rock or some moss and wondered if this is the world we'll leave behind someday or if future ruins will be so visually pleasing as these. Time passes. passes and when you finally leave it may be dark and you've hardly noticed the sun go down or that you've left something or a part of you behind. As a rule you start to avoid naming places that are abandoned. As soon as it has a name it becomes real, others come and even if they share the same awe and the need to keep it secret and magical, eventually others who do not will come. For that very reason I don't find the Magic Kingdom in any way magical. I look to keep a room with two occupants where I can have that conversation that occurs with derelict place that you cannot have in a crowd.
I realize here that I've made a rookie mistake. I've left my flashlight charging back at the room. This is a missed opportunity as I can see this tunnel stretching deep below the ruins and seemingly connecting to the other areas we saw exposed earlier. Regardless, this has to be one of the largest ruins I've had the pleasure to see, and I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Join me next time as I wander a castle mental asylum.